Thank you for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs. Today, we'll be looking at the new exclusive release for Barnes & Noble, if you're in the United States. This is one of their board games out of the Games Workshop. So this is Blitz Bowl Season 2. So this is the second edition of Blitz Bowl. And for $50, you get this board game here. Rated at easy level two. So these are normally good games for non players. People who are not fans of tabletop might want to interest them in it. So let's get this open at $50. What are we going to find inside this box? So it looks like we have our gaming field or the pitch. And we have the dugouts for each team in here. We have the little plastic bag. This will contain our rule book and advertising material. Now the miniatures. So red team looks to be the Empire Humans. Blue team, the dwarves. We've got our own set of dice exclusive to Blood Bowl. And exclusive, just the little symbols that come on them mean different things in the game. The basis for our miniatures. Now, before we get into that, all right. So here's uh, the various cards that go with the game. And looks like three decks for various teams in here and a Wood Elf team, which not is not in this box. All right, we're going to get these uh, cracked open and start playing. Something I'm looking for is if this starter box has the cards necessary to take Season 1 miniatures and bring them into Season 2. All right, we'll get this together and be right back. And we're back. So I finished putting together all the models, popping everything out, going through the rule book, and here's what you have at the end of it. So take the lid off, and you find this. So the whole game, at least the starter edition, can fit within the box. And I re recommend that you keep the box sideways and I'll explain why. So, you know, you take your rule book out and you take out your board here. This will be your pitch. So you can see everything fits in there, which if you have any other Blitz Bowl teams, that means you can actually slide them in these spots here and play with them also. Now, you can tell the game was meant to be stored sideways. And the reason for that is, you know, you take your dugouts out, you've got some other loose plastic bits that if you, if I took this on the plane and started shaking around, it would um, spill everywhere. What I did like is this little feature of the pass range marker. It comes out, and that's what keeps all the little tiny footballs and the die. Safe and sound in there. So I like that. So you have room for all your challenge and bonus play cards over here. You have your player cards here. Now the starter comes with the Middenheim Maulers, the humans, and with a dwarf. But you have player cards and you can keep them there. And then you can have some of the different ball cards. Now something I should point out, and there's room for all of them here, but every team has its own unique type of ball with it. So there's rules in there to like if you just don't want to play with the standard football and you have some of the other Blood Bowl pieces or just uh, want to bring those other teams on, 
you can spice up the game after you've learned it with different special types of balls for all the racial teams. That brings up a good point. In this pack, I only put the dwarf in human team cards, each corresponding to a different type of character model in the game. But when you go to Barnes & Noble and you buy this set, you're going to see a lot of Blitz Bowl Season 1 boxes and some of the other team boxes there. Those are all for Season 1 or First Edition. So if you're trying to convert to Season 2, what are you going to do? Well, the Season 2 starter box comes with the cards you need for the other teams of Blitz Bowl. So they have the Undead, the Goblin, Chaos, Halfling, Dark Elf, Wood Elf, Plain Elf, the Lizardmen, Nurgle, Skaven, and Orcs. So what you see here is actually cards for teams that they don't release Barnes & Noble exclusive Blitz Bowl teams for. So you actually have some cards here that if you play Blood Bowl and you want to use your models in Blitz Bowl, the Series 2 set has all the cards you need to convert that. So you need to think Blood Bowl is the full game, Blitz Bowl is the skirmish version. In essence, what's happening is in a box of Blood Bowl figures, you get two sprues. In Blitz Bowl, you only get one sprue, and the one sprue makes basically six characters. So it's basically half boxes, so Blitz Bowl's half the game. I mean, the idea of the game is that these are all tryouts, so this is the crush, the preseason, you know, the combine, getting ready to see if you've got what it takes to go on to full Blood Bowl. But it's nice that all the cards you need for any team, except the Ogres, but that makes sense because the Ogre modules are much bigger, and I don't know how you'd balance that game. But when you look at pitch here, so this board folds out, and you have two sides. And each side will have its dugout. Now, the key to this game is this is where you line up, where the fancy scroll work tiles are. So you can take your characters and send them up on the board. You get to put everyone out. This is where they go, and this is where they're trying to get to. Now, the difference with the different board sides is these little blocks create obscurity. So you can't move through, you can't pass through these red line blocks. And the trap door, instead of a kickoff, the little ball pops up there. And all the little bases have it so like, you can tell who has a ball. And more than one ball can be in play at any time. But all the bases have a little notch. I probably need to work on widening. But yeah, there's a little hole there that this peg is supposed to fit into. So I'll have to widen that out some. I hadn't tested that yet. But, so this is the intro level board. One trap door, two obscuring blocks. Now let's flip it. So this is the advanced board. So you'll line up in here. This board makes passing much more difficult. And there's two trap doors. So it creates a little bit more variety on where the ball is going to pop up there. So in going through the rule book, the pages of rules um, are longer than some of the other games like Combat Arena, Crypt Hunters, or Rise of the Terminators. But the rules are actually pretty simple. This is what they, on a scale of 1 to 5, 
5 being the highest, 1 being the lowest, they consider this game to be a 2. And so, what I like about this rule book, reference sheet on the back of the booklet. Outstanding. Not only that, reference sheet on next year dugout. So as each player faces each other, they can interpret the different symbols on the dice, they know what different players can do. Appreciate that. And also what I liked is they have these drill cards. So this is to actually run you through the game. So these are your drills before you play to basically give you little pictured setups of all the little models there. Now honestly, I look at this game, 50 bucks, you get basically a game that can be played in under an hour once you know all the rules. They actually provide you with a lot of uh, accoutrement to uh, learn the rules here. And the game's pretty simple in reality. You move, you knock people down, you push people out of the way, you catch balls, you pass balls, and you run to the other side. And victory is normally determined by the score differential. So you have to outscore your opponent. So I'm liking that. But there is actually some additions to the game. So you can actually play this in leagues. So at under an hour a game with several people, you could actually get a tournament in. They recommend 10 games. You actually get a tournament in in a day. Might not be able to get all 10 games in, but definitely you've got ability to run a fun game here. And also, as the league is kind of like a campaign system, you as a coach can get, you know, additional traits. Things to make your team special or unique as you play through the season. And for that, they actually give you a stack of little sheets so that you can play your Blood Bowl campaign season. You've got your coach roster, you can record all your games here, and record all your traits. So I like that. Make it, if they only sold this at friendly local game stores, I could see a lot of people buying into this. And if the base game's uh, too simple, they have ways to spice it up, add extra, more advanced rules, so um, the special ball rules, different ways to do end games instead of a sudden death. Yep, bonus plays there. So it does seem like a very entertaining game. I don't know how deeply I'd, I would want to delve into it. Uh, in this area, there is a Blood Bowl group that operates out of end games. So I could see that there'd be a chance uh, to find people interested in Blitz Bowl. If you're a Blood Bowl player and you can't people get people into like the crunchiness of Blood Bowl, I think Blitz Bowl is probably a really good um, supplement to that. If you have children who are interested in sports but not models, this might actually be a good game to show that there is a crossover. There is a way to play their games in miniature form instead of getting fresh air outside. So all in all, I'm happy with this game. I'm gonna force my co-residents or my family to go through a couple rounds of this, see if I've got this down, and see if there's any interest in taking this game any further. I am interested in painting them up. These are actually pretty interesting little figures here. I may actually take some and convert them to Necromunda. But that'll be a different video. All right, 50 bucks, pretty decent buy. Seems like an entertaining game, though I can tell it's probably not for everyone. So thank you for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs, and we'll see you next time.